And I'll go back to Philippians 4, 6, 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he has done. Then you'll experience God's peace. So that means, basically, the more time that you spend with God, the more peace that you're going to fill. When you can't pay those bills, when you have a spouse that leaves you, when you have all of these crazy things in your life, you'll have a peace that goes beyond understanding. What does that mean? It's a peace that doesn't make sense. It's just a piece that doesn't make sense. And these are the things that I love witnessing to people in the workplace, about in the marketplace. You know, whenever they ask about the diabetes or, or, or they say, hey, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm like, glad you asked. And so, like I said, the first 44 years of my life I spent for Brian. The next 44 years, I'm gonna spend for him. He's all mine, man, and it, I'm all his. <laughs> and both, I guess. Um, but you know, I don't think that we realize in the, in, in the marketplace how powerful that we can be used when we have Jesus inside of us. We, I, I really don't think as human beings we comprehend that the Spirit of God really, literally, legitimately lives inside of us and what that means if we put him first and think from that identity, think from that victory, not a victim's mentality. That's where the devil wants you. He wants you to feel like a loser. He wants you to feel like that you're not enough, but you are enough. God made you. He lives inside of you and he wants to use you and I wanna be used by him. And then unconditional love, which is kind of the hardest one. <laughs> we all have clients, right? <laughs> you know, there's some of those, you know, the phone rings and you're like, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I've got, I work in IT, man, trust me, there, there, there's tons of them, right? There's, there's great ones and there's not so great ones. But we need to love people the same way that Jesus loved people. I always, I try to think like, where would Jesus be if he was here today with all of the crazy stuff that's going on in society. And that's one reason that people hated him. He was in the places where he quote unquote shouldn't have been. And I feel like that a lot of churches these days, a lot of ministries, we're fishing in an aquarium. We're saving people that have already been saved. We're preaching to people that I'll be honest, like don't need it really. I mean, everybody needs it, but you know what I'm saying? We're not reaching the lost. We're not going out. This is a broken world. And I feel like that the workers are very, very few and the harvest is crazy plentiful. And I feel like in the workplace, we have a responsibility, like I said, not to go out there with the end is near cardboard sign, but to just live your life in a way to where when people look at you, they say, there is something different about that person. What is it? And whenever they ask, you can say, glad you asked. One of my favorite movies I used to watch with my son was uh, Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. Do you guys know that movie? I'm sure almost everybody does. But there's a part in that whenever Will Smith's coming up, or he's trying to, he's in his internship, and the uh, president of the company rolls up in that crazy car. Remember, he gets out and Will Smith looks at him and he says, what do you do and how do you do it? Yeah. As Christians, people need to be looking at us and say, who do you know and how do you know him? And I think that's the, that's the poise that we need to be coming from. When people see us, we need to be set apart. We are to be set apart. We're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to blend in with the rest of society and conform. That's easy. That's the easy way out. I'm addicted to doing the hard things now. Um, and, and, and Chris, you know this, uh, we talked about this. When I started burying myself, I, I have an hourly reminder on my watch, every single hour on the hour that says, talk to God. Every single hour. And there's some days I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. And you swipe it away. But it builds that habit. It builds that mindset to every single time that you see it. Sometimes I'll stop and I'll pray for five minutes. Sometimes I'll be way too busy and I'll swipe it, but I'm thinking about it. And you do that for three, four, five weeks. It's, it builds up a habit where you're talking to God all the time. And you may seem like a crazy person, but I don't care. Like, <laughs> it really doesn't matter. I don't care if people think that I'm crazy. And um, it'd be crazy to choose this world over eternity. That's what's crazy. And so you just got to build up those little habits within yourself. And so if you do something for the course of two or three weeks, do that for a year. This is what I've done. And so it's ridiculous. Like When I'm brushing my teeth, I'm praying. It's, it's really, really silly, but it's cool. I'm talking to God all the time. And when you do that, your mind is open and you see these open doors, these wide doors that are just kicked open for opportunities for you to speak to people, reach people, especially in the marketplace.